Welcome. So, last session of the day, I guess. Um, and let us start that session with a shockingly high number. So apparently 75% of container images that run in production have high or critical, critical vulnerabilities. Uh, furthermore, 85% of these container images have a vulnerability for which a patch or fix actually exists. Or at least this is what the numbers from a sister report show. Um, link to the report are, are in the slides. So um, the report is a bit of a year old, but I kind of assume the numbers haven't changed dramatically since then. And um, now you ask yourself, these numbers seem high. What can we can we do about it? Um, is there something we can do against this? Like. It's certainly not the lack of great tools that, I mean, there are a lot of great tools to scan container images for vulnerabilities and, and other things. So it's maybe also something that we just have to run them. Now, we think we actually have one idea where we can actually make it a little bit easier to run off those tools for you automatically so that you don't have to uh, think about them too much. So today we would like to talk about how you can nicely integrate um, tools like security, vulnerability, compliance tools into your build process if you happen to have uh, Shipwright uh, around. Now, this won't obviously fix the numbers that I just showed you in production, but at least our goal should be we shouldn't increase those numbers. Like, if you build something new, uh, let's make sure that it doesn't have any vulnerabilities right from the start, right? So let's not make this number even bigger. So this is Karen. Um, I'm Matthias. We work at IBM. Uh, we work on a project. It's called Code Engine. It's a serverless platform as a service, which um, has built capabilities. Like you give us the source code, we will build it. And in this capacity, we work on the CDF project Shipwright, um, an in-cluster source to container image build framework. Now, we are happy to share some of the latest changes we did in Shipwright um, that go around how we can integrate more tooling into the build process to help you with things like the scanning or other compliance requirements you might have. Uh, one example could be, for instance, software build for materials, S-bombs. Um, how can you create them? as part of your build flow automatically without having to do anything about it. Well, the idea is to make your life easier and that you don't have to think about those things unless, of course, the tools find something in your image and then, of course, you have to think about it and have to fix it. Now, for those of you who have not heard or used Shipwright before, uh, like I said, it's an in-cluster uh, source to container image build framework. Um, it's with other words, like if you have to happen a Kubernetes cluster laying around and you use that for uh, your, your project, Shipwright is one option you can use to put it into your Kubernetes cluster and do the builds for you in that cluster. For instance, application builds or container images for run to completion workloads. Now, um, Shipwright is an incubation project in uh, CDF since 2021. So, um, fairly new, but we're, we've been around. We have community meetings every Monday. Um, everybody's happy, uh, can, can join. We're happy to have new contributors. Um, details are on shipwright.io. Links are also on the slides. Um, so please join us. Uh, let, let's talk about ideas. Now, um, we are currently on our slow but steady march towards better API status. Uh, da, da, does not, it shouldn't scare you that we are from alpha to better. Actually, Shipwright runs in IBM Code Engine for three years now. So it's, it's doing its job diligently and, and, and perfectly fine since three years uh, with thousands of builds per day. Uh, it's just that the API, we still think um, we want to keep the door open for things to change in the API because the API is, we really wanted to keep it simple not too opinionated, but also powerful enough. And um, as you might guess, that's not that easy. So we wanted to keep the door open for iterations on the API. But in terms of its 
core capability, it's, it actually really works um, wonderful for us. Which actually brings us to today's talk. So we want to talk about one of the things we changed recently and what we think um, could be quite useful for, um, for everybody. And before we go into that, we actually want to um, speak about some of the inner workings because it makes it easier later for in the demos to, to know the terms and what does what. So with that, uh, let's head into some of the inner workings. Microphone. So yeah, in Shipwright there are a few uh, core concepts uh, which we which we would like to explain first. So these are builds, uh, build strategies, and build run. So build is what you want us to build for you. So here you can specify where we can get the source code from, or you can also provide the source code from your local machine. So the build strategy is how you want us to build it. So here. You can uh, like build strategies somewhat comparable to GitHub action definitions or some other CI tool where you define the steps. And in our build strategies, there are steps to, steps too which you can define how you want to build your image or not. And then there is a build run. So build run is the actual build that runs, or you can say that it is the actual execution of that those steps in the cluster. So with regards to the uh, build strategy. With regards to the build strategies, uh, with regards to the build strategy, uh, here you are like, uh, these are usually maintained and uh, like rolled out in the cluster by the strategy creators. And we do provide some sample uh, build strategies in the sample section in our, like in our build, uh, shipwright repo. So for example, we have sample build strategy which shows you how you can integrate build kit to build Docker file based applications and then there is uh, like we can also integrate build ca build packs with shipwright where like ship if you don't know build pack build packs is basically like it detects the programming language from your source code and it builds it and it pushes to the uh, like uh, target registry and there are other tools such as Kaniko, ko builder so the point is you can uh, integrate a variety of different tools with shipwright so under the cover of Shipwright, there is Tecton. So we use it to automatically create the execution plan of steps, both system-defined boilerplate steps and the steps defined by the strategy creator. You must know that some common elements are provided by the Shipwright itself. For example, the strategy creator does not have to deal with how he will obtain the source code from Git or from other means. So Shipwright does that for you. So yeah, our main goal is Shipwright is convenience, abstraction of uh, complexity, and usage of standards and proven tools and processes. So the problem is the way we use build pack for now, uh, like what it does is like it eventually pushes the image to the target registry. But like it sounds very nice in the beginning, but the problem is like it makes it very difficult or somewhat impossible to extend the build process. So for example, if we want to run the vulnerability scan, scan on an image, right? And we eventually, like it would be really nice if there is a possibility that we want to abort the build altogether and not to push the uh, image to the container registry if it has critical vulnerabilities. So there are other use cases also where this default behavior for now is counter predictive. So these use cases might include like image signing, uh, vulnerability scanning, metadata post-processing, validation checks, etc. So this led to the initiative we mainly want to talk about today. So we want to break the uh, build strategy into two flavors. So the left one here, like here you can see the orange boxes basically represents those steps which are introduced by the shipwright. So these kind of will be maintained and handled by the shipwright. And the blue boxes are, are like are those steps which are from the strategy itself. And these are usually created by the strategy creator. Okay. And on the left hand side, this is our current behavior. So here we can integrate, integrate uh, different tools as I told you, like we can integrate build kit, build packs, Scanico. So here you can integrate and then 
your strategy will eventually push the image for you. So that is why we call it as, uh, like, we call it as uh, strategy manage push, very creative, I know. So and the, on the other hand, so there is now, like we are working on it and we have done a few examples for it. So on the other hand side, like there is a possibility to tell the strategy that Shipwright is supposed to do the push. So on the left side, it was like strategy creator, he has to define who will do the push. But here, like Shipwright will actually do the push for you. He will be able to like, sorry, it will be able to do the push for you. Okay. So here we do like on the right side, we do inject the steps which will get the source code like and it will be managed by Shipwright and then there, these are the steps which will, we will get from the strategy itself and then Shipwright will do the push for you. So this enables us like two features and two areas of features and functionality. Yep. So there is possibility for strategy writers to add more steps into the strategy definition that happened prior to the, uh, prior to the push. So eventually Tecton will take care, like everything happens in the due order. And at the end, Shipwright will add the push, add the, uh, like add the final step for the pushing. And there is also possibility for us in Shipwright to put additional logic into this push step at the very end. And we have two examples, like we will show you two examples today. So we'll talk about two things, uh, software build of material, that is S-bombs and vulnerability scanning. So yeah, Matthias will cover the demos for those two examples. Yeah. All right, so we will do just two demos um, that kind of show what we think would make sense if we now have the capability kind of to break up what you just saw. Like coming back to the Lego pieces, right? Like build kit is such a Lego piece for us or Paquito build packs or KO builder, you name it. And sometimes it's easy to put them together, sometimes something it's missing. So, and we kind of hoping to solve this one here or make it a little bit easier for some of the use cases. So the two demos um, are S-bombs and vulnerability scans. Now it's just two demos for saking, of the sake of having two demonstrations so that we don't mix too much. Uh, we kind of think that in, in the real life, um, people would just choose opt in and opt out what feature that they want. So I guess most of the time it kind of makes sense to, to have the full package and actually do vulnerability scan and also the creation of the S-bomb. But you can use either of them or, or none of them depending on, on your use cases. Um, with each of these demonstrations, we will create a build. So it, again, what you want to build and then just trigger a build run so that we have one example. Now, what you see here is um, just on the bottom, um, you're not supposed to read it, it's just a K9S output of the cluster just to give you an indication something is actually happening. Tecton is doing its magic, spinning up a pod, putting in everything, images are being loaded. On the top left, uh, we are using the Shipwright CLI to create a build and a build run. And in the top right, uh, just a peek look into the container registry to see there's actually nothing there yet. And if everything goes well, then we hopefully have an image in the container registry at the end. Now, um, what we want here is, again, breaking up the build. We just don't want to, in this case, it's a sample Go application um, with, a, with a Docker file. And um, up until now, how Shipwright worked with the build kit, build strategy is, you give it a source code and a Docker file, it will figure it out, it will build it, it will push it ready. Um, but now we kind of modified the build strategy in a way to say, build kit, you do your magic with the Docker file and the build, but just don't push it. Create uh, a nice OCI raw directory on, on the file system and store the raw data there because we actually want to do some post-processing on it. Now, this is happening as, as, as I speak. And um, eventually, the, um, you see on the top right that the image will show up. So what, what's happening is once the build step is done, we go into our post-processing in Shipwright. Uh, we call um, just whatever tool makes sense in this demonstration, just an implementation detail here. Uh, we use SIFT to um, work on that directory, let it create an S-bomb in whatever format you want. And this 
uh, output is then captured, put into an OCI file, attached to the registry, uh, to the image, and then pushed into the OCI registry. And then eventually, just that you can see that it actually happened, I used Crane to um, just, as is, pull it out of the registry to, to give it an indication what the build run actually created here. Now, again, um, the idea is, and especially me coming from a, with a bit of a Cloud Foundry background, um, you always have to be careful with opinionated systems, right? So we want to keep it flexible enough so that it makes sense for you. Uh, SIFT is just an example here. We know there are build tools that actually create the S-bombs as part of the build process anyway. Uh, KO is such of a great example that, that creates the S-bomb automatically. So we also envision that depending on, again, what Lego pieces you put together, some will end up creating the S-bomb themselves and we will just post-process them. If you happen to have a build strategy that uses a tool that doesn't create an S-bomb, then at least you have the possibility to configure, please create one automatically for us so that uh, we, we can use it, um, or none at all if you just don't need that for your build. And again, again the, the, the core idea we have here is um, since we do the build anyway and we have all the pieces of information in the pod anyway, uh, best is to actually do the post-processing right there and then just push the image already around. So that would be basically to automatically erase S-bombs with whatever strategy you want. The second demonstration, again, very, very similar. Uh, we create a build and then later a build run. Just, again, just for the sake of the demonstration, like Shipwright has the capability to, to not have these two steps. You can also do it in one step, but I didn't want to overload the, the demonstration too much here. Um, now we fake the build a little bit because we actually need an image for the demo that has vulnerabilities and it took us actually a bit of time to find an image that works all the time with vulnerabilities, but we found one in the Python namespace. Um, so this is, uh, the build is just um, taking the, the image, again, kind of a build. Um, the output is, again, not um, a container image that you can then push, but again, just the raw OCI on the, on the build port file system. So at some point you will see that the build step is done and then gives back control to us in the post-processing. And in the post-processing, we use, in this case, Trivi. Uh, again, implementation specific, you can, technically speaking, uh, configure whatever tool that makes sense or you use or you're familiar with to do vulnerability scanning. And we said there are a lot of tools out there, right? So what happens here is Trivi is um, executed on the um, build pod file system with the OCI. And what is important or what we find important is the image is not pushed, right? So it's still only in your build system. We find a couple of vulnerabilities and what we now do is the, the build run, as we said, is the execution of a build. And the nice thing about a build run is once it's done, it will actually be enriched with information from the actual build. Uh, one example could be, for instance, the digest that was created or sizes and so on. And um, these status fields are now enriched with the vulnerabilities that were found in the respective image. Now, again, multiple use cases. Um, of course, there's the option that you just omit the whole vulnerability scan, like the behavior we had before, just run it through and push whatever you want. Um, another idea is um, you just leave it with the details you have in the build run. So the build run actually at the end contains the status. Yeah, it's completed. It took three minutes. And by the way, these are the vulnerabilities I found in the image that I just created for you. And then it's a, a, about the rounding um, framework or tooling you have, whether you want to read those information and process them further. Or what we kind of think makes the most sense is that you configure your build in a way to say, um, just abort it. Like if you find a vulnerability during the build, just abort it right there. And the great thing is the image isn't pushed to the OCI registry already because I mean, it doesn't make sense to push something um, if you actually know there's something in there that's not supposed to be in there. And that gives you feedback to see, okay, maybe I have to look into actually what's, what's the problem, um, CVE number, you find out the package and then can 
iterate on your source code and say again, okay, uh, let's do it again. Now, these are just two examples that we picked because we figured makes the most sense and these are the ones that we are currently working on. There are other ideas we have. Um, for instance, BuildKit has, oh, BuildPacks, I always confuse them. BuildPacks has this uh, feature for reproducible builds that it actually manipulates the creation timestamp of the image. Um, the idea is the same input should produce the same output independent of the time you built the image. Uh, a lot of container image tooling actually uses the current timestamp um, of the build for the, for the container image. So another thing we now have the opportunity with separating the things is actually that we can do post-processing on whatever field in the container uh, image we want, especially the creation timestamp. So we could just uh, set a neutral timestamp like zero or the, the commit timestamp. So whatever makes sense, um, we can do with post-processing before we actually um, release the image into the container registry. Other use cases might be removing uh, annotations labels that are actually in, in some base image. People actually sometimes get annoyed by if they have some base image that already comes with labels and they just inherit that and they don't really make sense anymore. So we think there are more possibilities and we would like to hear feedback. So what are, are other tools that you know and love and use for container images where you think, okay, it kind of makes sense to integrate them into a build automatically so that you don't have to think about them and um, of course questions. So I would open the floor for questions. Exactly, like, um, so the question is whether you have to write Tekton YAML. So we, in Shipwright, we, we use Tekton and we don't, th this is our tool, but we kind of decided to say, okay, we abstract that away from, from the end user. So our interface is really what we just said, like the build, which is um, just a very simple YAML file with, this is the source, these are the credentials to obtain the source. Uh, this is the strategy we think makes sense. Um, this is where we want to put it. This is like the simplest contract you can have. Um, you can actually extend it with, with more things, but like to keep it simple, this is the, the simplest contract. And um, such a build definition is really just 10 lines of YAML. And um, the idea is that we provide a convenience layer and do basically all the Tekton stuff under the cover for you, including obtaining source code and um, setting up the task run that the steps are in the right order and everything. So the question is whether it makes sense to have Shipwright as part of like a Tekton pipeline and I just nodded to my colleague, yes, there are, um, there are such ideas uh, we want such integration also to be possible. Um, and oh, Enrique, do you want to? You have to think about like, like our goal is like with Code Engine, which is a serverless platform as a service. So we have compute resources for people to, to use, to serve or have jobs. So the idea is of course, would be great to use the same resources actually also to create the build. So whenever that makes sense. And there are a lot of use cases where we also have like Tekton pipelines. And of course it would kind of make sense to, to put that together. All right, so then thank you. So in the name of all Shipwright contributors, um, thank you very much for your time and your interest. Uh, check us out on Shipwright.io or github.com slash shipwright-io. So we have a couple of projects there. It's not just the build that we just showed you. There's also the CLI, uh, which is again like a convenience layer where you just 
call the CLI with this is my Git repository or also this is my local source code. So we also support that you kind of say, uh, ship right, please take the, this local source directory, push it up, create a container image um, for me. Um, and we also have other projects. Um, so check it out. Um, it's, it's all in this area. Um, we have uh, some actually great getting started guides. Like if you happen to have a kind cluster laying around, um, it's just like two commands you can copy paste and uh, set up ship right in less than five minutes um, with the samples we have just to get an idea. And with that, thank you very much and have an awesome day. <laughs>